brothers wiss. The brothers wiss, brothers wiss. The brothers wiss. The brothers. You're wiss. now listening to Greg. It's the brothers wiss. Let's take a ride through space on this mothership. Hey, everybody. Why this you is Greg with uh, another uh, Greg Talks. This is going to be number five. This time we have a special guest. But before I introduce him, uh, people said I should probably give a heads up on what these are about just so you're not uh, disappointed. I mean, you're going to be disappointed. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't fret. Uh, but this is a companion podcast to the regular The Brothers Wiss. This is really just a compilation of my ideas throughout the weeks. Uh, some of it's technical, some of it's non-technical. So it's a very informal mix of those two. So proceed with caution. Um, and today I have with me one James Burdine. Hey, how's it going? It's good to be here. <laughs> he says at the beginning, uh, you should really save those kind of uh, things for the end. <laughs> when you're, you know, that way you don't regret every, everything that you're, you're, you're thinking now. Um, but uh, James, you are <laughs> here in College Station with me, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been here almost 20 years, dude. It's yeah, been uh, a hell of a ride. And you've been, well, I would say we've worked together for at least 10 of that, uh, 10 of those years, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, almost, yeah, 10 to 12 years. Yeah, you were my work wife for a really long time. All right, and then it just, I was done. <laughs> or, or, I don't know, I, I've been trying to follow that, trying to follow that metaphor, I guess, like the house we lived in kicked me out. <laughs> <laughs> you got, uh, you got removed from the lease? Is that how that works? I don't know. I guess, yeah, yeah, they fixed the problem. Uh, so we were bosom buddies and they found out that you're actually, uh, you're actually a man, so, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm obviously fishy enough to stay in drag, so, it's unfortunate for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, no. with some of the nasty You need stuff. the wig. <laughs> I need the, oh, oh. you're saying I can't pull off, uh, God, I don't know, is there anybody? Two, what two minutes I, in, Black two minutes China? in, it became extremely, people? extremely personal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are, um, you are. let's get a little background. You've been in IT for a minute, and you are still in yeah. IT. So you are, what's your what's your title? What do you call yourself? Uh, downtrodden. No, uh, I, I'm technically a network administrator, um, but I do that and a little bit of project management, a little bit. It's the same, same tale uh, that it was at, at our last place we worked together, it's just, you know, Oh, you do lots of things? Cool. Well, here's your title, and then we're going to have you do lots of things. The tale is old as time. Um, yeah, what is it? Uh, my yeah. favorite line was, uh, other duties as assigned, right? Isn't that what it always yes. said on our job descriptions? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, currently, currently uh, I've got an environment that I inherited from a guy that left, and the automation to deploy into that environment was written by a third-party vendor, and Looking at it, it's 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 impossible to discern. I I don't know if I should say who they are, but anyway, this okay. company intentionally it's very obvious when you dig in and see how they did stuff with Jenkins and, and uh code deploy and stuff like that. It's very obvious that they overcomplicated the process so that they were absolutely necessary to oh. be used for changes in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. When consultants do that. Yeah. There's the kind of consultants that are like, I'm gonna help you learn this, I'm gonna do this once for you. And then you're never going to call me again. And then there are the other guys that are like, I'm going to make sure you're always calling me. Like that one guy uh, in the microtech consulting industry who who builds in his – I won't name his name either because <laughs> I, I don't remember. Say, I have no idea what you're talking about, so I'm just going to – I'm just gonna be quiet. His name his, his name isn't Greg. His name <laughs> isn't Greg Soul, but he's but he's. Uh, uh, I don't I don't remember his name. I don't, I don't, I'm going to think. Hey, Oh, this is a companion to your brother's wisp, so I'm not gonna. I won't actually. Even if I remember this guy's name, I'm not gonna. That's I'm not gonna do any what was shots that? What fired. Was that but... crazy CCIE we used to have and come and do work for us. What was that guy's name? Uh, Ron. Ron. Something. He yeah. Had the sexiest voicemail you've ever heard. Oh yeah, this gravelly Ron. I'm like, oh goodness. Because he sounded. Did I like dial a, the right number? He sounded like a super Star Trek nerd, and then you'd get his voicemail, and it was Ron. Maybe that was yeah. on his dating There's a profile, guy... right? So he's just you know. There's a catch-all. There's a there's this uh, there's a there's a project manager where I'm at now who's uh, who works upstairs and God dang it I don't know if I can actually do 
I don't. I can't do my imp- impression of him saying his own name without actually saying his name. I'm gonna. Try, I'm not gonna stay. I'm not gonna say his name though. I'll say. Uh, God dang it! Now the only names that can come to mind are actual people. I can't say your for the life name. of me. I, say your dad's name. That'll work. Doctor Bedine. <laughs> and just he walks up. He's like, "Hi, I'm Jim Bedine," and he hands you his hand in the palm down you're gonna kiss the back of my hand kind of fashion it's real lightly and it's like it's not a handshake he's a dainty southern woman and he wants you to uh but he's he's just i don't know his voice uh, is the uh the response hey now anticipating (laughs) you're you're gonna be attracted to me anyway that's sorry (laughs) we're we're off on a tangent about people who say their names in a very sultry sultry manner (laughs) uh good times uh maybe we're just doing it wrong did you ever think of it that way? Yeah. No. I, you know what? Leave an impression, I guess, is what you're supposed to do. And <laughs> I don't. I leave a very, you and I both leave, leave very awkward impressions. Like, hi, I'm Greg. I'm J- I'm James, I guess, yeah. maybe. Enjoy your meal. Charm? You too. Oh, you're the waiter. Never mind. Yeah. It's one yeah. Of those things. yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's you and I. <laughs> um, yeah. No, so, like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm in the middle of now. And so I had, in, in our staging and dev environments, uh, I had to, the network, the, like, I've got a guy who works mostly remote. He's like, Hey, what's going on today? Everything all right? I'm like, well, if this says anything, your network administrator was man and was manually deploying RPMs into your environment. So <laughs> like, how does that tell you what kind of day it is? Mm. IT jokes that only IT people it's understand. Well, I'll be here. It's the only IT people whole, listen to week. this. So don't anticipate, you know, muggles catching, catching yeah. wind of this one. Let's uh, see. No one's going to. So let's, let's dig into some of the weird stuff that happened to me during the week. We had to do an RFC twenty five forty four test. Uh, have you ever had to do one of those? <laughs> we ended up doing a, a last mile for a carrier out to some place, and they were like very adamant that we had to do this twenty five forty four test. And uh, so we had to quickly find a device that would do it, and we found Jeez. one on eBay for like three hundred bucks. And there you uh, go. I kind of talked about that before, but uh, that device only fires stuff one way, right? So it'll do like various uh, packet sizes and. Right. Excuse me. Speeds. Looking for latency and loss and all that crap. And so we ended up using an ME thirty four hundred E. Does this hardware feature <gasps> called Ethernet Loopback, and it'll it'll take the packet. There you in, go. It'll swip swap the MAC address, and it'll fire it back out. Uh, you still had the ME thirty four hundred lying around? No, I had to eBay it. <laughs> oh, I don't I was know what say, happened. I thought we. One. So I picked up another I, one. I think we threw it out. It burned up. Power right. supply. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're only. Um, I don't know, they're like fifty bucks online. Well, this is an ME thirty four hundred E E series, so it's a slightly oh, okay. slightly newer version. But they're still only like fifty bucks uh, to get it to do the the loopback thing. So I thought that was uh, nifty. So we, now really we funny. have a kit of uh, the <laughs> tester we got is is older, so the battery doesn't work. So you got to keep that plugged in. And then we, you know you you have the giant switch under your other arm, and you can test your circuits. But we can actually produce these reports and. Um, I'm fairly sure we'll never have to do this again. Uh, but I was thinking about it. You know, if somebody ever complains about a connection, I mean, we got the kit to test it, you know. It's it's, it's yeah, more you... for uh, transport networks, right? So if you're, like, going right. sure, through sure. some devices, not, like, just, like, a fluke meter test or whatever. So Right. There you Under go. the odds. So now people can ask us for that, and we can supply it. Hmm. There you go. There you go. Now you're going to be asked by management, how can we monetize it? How can we offer this... Uh... <laughs> As a recurring service, anything for revenue. Yeah, man, always be selling, right, bro? It's like coming up right, with new right. products constantly. Um, uh, you know. So, can we put this in? Can we put this in one of the not guys' car and send him to customer sites, almost like a door-to-door salesman, like Dwight Schrute, but but to test links. <laughs> Don't say yeah. it too loud. I'm afraid they might hear you. It's one of those things. They're the sure. only people. They're the only people subscribing. <laughs> Let's see. I had uh, I had a note in here that I plan to recertify my CCMP before the end of February. Well, uh, fast forward to now, I actually did recertify my CCMP. Uh, there, you know, because they're revamping the tests and everything. Right. So you want to get in there before they change everything yeah, up? Yeah, before I have to figure it all out again. Because I would have to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have to start studying in like eight months from now. So I was like, you know what? I could do future Greg a favor and then put it off for two and a half years. So I uh, I just studied really hard for a couple of days and then went and passed it dude i was like 
10 questions in and I was already planning for how I was going to retake it. Cause I was sure I was going to fail it. They kept asking me yeah. tack X plus questions and it's like, <laughs> dude, I don't, cause it's like, uh, check all that apply. You know, it's like, does it do you use TCP or UDP? And I was like, I don't remember. And then it was like, does it separate, uh, you know, authorization and authentication? Does it do? I was, I was like, oh man, I can't remember which one does which. And so as does soon it, as I, does it, does it lift and separate authentication? And uh... <laughs> no, it tucks. <laughs> tucks tight um but no i like uh because it was like question three i got one of those and then like question five i got another one and then like question 10 i got another i was like oh shit. that means i'm missing and this. you know the, right exactly yeah. and you know they're adaptive so you're like all that does is make you much you question everything yeah i don't know anything yeah well obviously i don't Nose know this because you keep asking me about it jeez right uh, i would tell you i don't know if that was an option on one of these right things. is there is there an option like i don't know tech x <laughs> next just give me an automatic ten percent off. I like that. Just and and let me let me get to the stuff that actually matters. <laughs> of everything I studied, it wasn't the inner workings of TACX. I just don't remember that because it's just you know, ugh. it's one of those things you put in place once and you never have to think about it again. So I don't really right. remember the highlights. But I eventually got a matching question, like a fourth question about it, and I was like, oh okay, well now I can clearly see what I was supposed to be doing. So I didn't get any further questions, but. I was still sure that, like, man, I've probably missed enough fees. And there was enough where I kind of – they were so close to the stuff I'd studied, but I couldn't 100% remember. So I guessed at it. But I ended up passing by, like, 50 points or something, which is a close enough nice. margin. Like I would, like I was telling somebody, I don't care if I pass by one point. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care if I pass I say, by did, did, get it exactly. did you pass? That's, the, that's really all that matters. Pass, fail for sure, so. I got this isn't this isn't like your undergraduate degree from in, in the 1980s. They don't actually care what your GPA is. Did, did you recertify? <laughs> but I picked up a lot of interesting tidbits while I was studying that stuff. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see. I added some of them to the notes just because I thought they were um, interesting enough to actually document. So let's see here. One was uh, HSRP and VRRP uh, preemption. You only need to configure that on one of the peers, the peer that has the higher priority that you want to take back over. So you only have to configure it on one side. Let's see. Um, GLBP, Gateway Load Balance Protocol, uses active virtual gateways to respond to ARP requests supplying max of differing gateways. I always forget how that works. So you've got one guy that does all of the ARP responses, and he'll just say, hey, use this MAC address of that guy, and then that one, and that one. So it kind of uh, load balances. Let's see what else that on there. Oh, would you turn on a voice VLAN on a Cisco switch? It enables port fast automatically. I didn't know that either. Um, nice. Native VLANs and Cisco trunks. Like, you know what that does, right? Like, it strips it off. Uh, you know, like when something's coming in, if it's VLAN 10 is the native VLAN, then everything that comes through, it'll strip it so right. that you can uh, have like a regular device or communicate. But for some reason in my brain, and I didn't realize that if you have one side that's VLAN 10 on native and the other that's 11, everything that's coming through the switch, right, and it's trunked and it's on VLAN 10 and it's going to go out that mm -hmm. trunk port, it strips it away. It strips the VLAN 10 off and then sends it across. For some reason in my brain, I always thought only if untagged packets come in on VLAN 10 does it do that. Obviously, I knew that wasn't 100% accurate, but for some reason, right. it just didn't click. That it, it literally removes everything from that VLAN and sends it across. That way... Uh, you know, like CDP will freak out if there's a VLAN, a native VLAN mismatch, and my brain never really put that together. Uh, right, so right. If you're trying to trunk it across, it's not going to trunk. It actually will split, strip it from everything and then just send it across. So, I don't know. Today I learned, or it, today it, I remember. It, right. Well, mis mismatch native VLANs is the only place you won't find junk in the trunk. Oh my god! That's all. That's all I'm here for. I have nothing intelligent to offer to this conversation. No, uh, no. I had. Uh, I argued with someone recently who was absolutely convinced, and this is you know another network engineer who was absolutely convinced that. I, and I actually slacked you about it. It was the the. Uh, if I'm. If I if your if your device is connected to me and I have you in an access VLAN, it doesn't matter what what VLAN that is. Like you. Your switch on your side doesn't care what VLAN I have that interface set in. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. They were absolutely convinced that they had to have the exact because we're and we're not and we're not doing we're not sharing STP. They're in their own little thing over here, and they're like, no, we, we just we're going to set it to match. I was like, but 
But okay. You don't have to. Like <laughs> it's irrelevant, but okay. If it makes you feel better. Right? That's like so before you go in your house, if you turn around three times and then knock on the door four times and then open the door, then uh, your family won't be dead. I heard somebody say something like their OCD, if they didn't hug their partner like uh, exactly 11 times before they left, they were sure they were going to die at some point during the day. So they, they, they like had to wow. do that. So maybe that's this guy's, uh, maybe this guy's thing. Otherwise, you know, maybe. Kittens, kittens will drown and puppies will, puppies will get run over in traffic otherwise. Yeah. So yeah, I did the recertification and there's um we so here in College Station we have three places that you can actually take a Pearson View test. One is used to be Microage. Now it's called Avenex, right? That testing center. Right. And I used mm-hmm. to have so much anxiety from taking tests there that every time I drove by that place, like I would get a little anxious. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. I got oh, over I agree. That. I got over that. But then um they have one out at the airport too at the flight school. And the previous two I'd taken there. And that was pretty nice. Uh, but this one, I could only take this one. They weren't offering it at those two places. They were only offering it at this new place. So if you're on the other side of university, that uh, weird sports place they have out there, it's like really big. I don't know. The big sports medicine sports medicine complex yeah, It's called place? like D1 yeah. or something. It's the second floor up there. Uh, so I, oh, I went weird. up there. And uh, they have like... Uh, very heightened security there so you know while i was like signing up and talking to the lady or whatever i heard somebody getting patted down i was like jesus what kind of test do you have to take to get patted down she was like every test it's like, oh okay so you go back there and you literally uh take your glasses off and they like examine them you have to open and close them do all this stuff and then uh you have to turn your pockets inside out put your hands in there move them around you have to like pat your legs down and pull your pant legs up dude they're like crazy about it and then you could like hear people rustling in there so they have like these high powered microphones that they're listening with and they have um cameras like looking straight down over you and at your back all this stuff it's crazy wow. out there and they also have palm scanners i didn't have to do it for my tests they just take were, your... there, were their hands cold when they when they when they went in for the uh <laughs> for the deep deep search they were gentle <laughs> <laughs> the deep cavity right it's crazy right it's just, i mean we're taking certification tests i don't I, it makes sense, I guess, to a degree. It's just, I don't know. They seem more thorough than the TSA, you know, so. Right. Well, and, oh God, that tells you where our priorities are. <laughs> I don't know. What do they call TSA, like security theater? It doesn't actually prevent anything. It's just the appearance of security yeah. to make everybody feel better or whatever. Because I've definitely got on flights with stuff I shouldn't have. Uh, so, by accident yeah well i've done yeah. that i mean like oh crap i totally still have my leatherman on my belt yeah. oops yeah i did that with my leatherman i shoved it in the front of my laptop bag with all the rest of the crap and it made it through i was like yeah thank goodness i was like i'm not throwing out 110 on le- leatherman like, yeah dude i've been carrying the same but... leatherman since 2002 and i was like man i i don't want this thing to mm-hmm. die. that'd have broken yeah. my heart but uh yeah yeah they're getting pretty legit on the testing centers for sure all right yeah, I I do. I'm uh I, I'm doing my uh, my master's through uh, WGU right now, and they're they're I, they have you in the in home, but you have to you have to do the camera. There can't be anything in the room. They look at the desk and like if anybody comes into the room, the, the test immediately ends and you fail. So like oh, I have shit. to you know let the family know like don't come in here, don't even let the cat in here. I'm in the room. I'm taking a test. If you make me fail this test, you're grounded. <laughs> you lock yourself on the toilet. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, no. You're no. making it go back in. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, if you actually get a test that you have to take the full ninety minutes on, I don't want hemorrhoids. I just want. Hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hey, so oh, I caught a little bit of this because my wife was watching it. Have you seen the Netflix show called The Circle? No. All right, that's good. It. Uh, it made me die a bit on the inside when I watched it. It's awful. So imagine, imagine I'm going to some spoiler alerts here. Spoiler alert horn. Uh, there's like a small like condo or something. I don't know. It's like a small apartment complex. It's really small. And they put people in these different rooms and they can't physically see each other. And the circle is this made up 
social media platform that they all uh, operate off of. And so you like, okay. you, they like develop, I don't know, this profile or whatever. And some of them catfish and they're not really who they say they are. Blah, blah, blah. They bullshit. Anyway, the part that really was like nails on a chalkboard for me was they don't type, right? They're not typing. So whenever they want to like post a message on there, they say it out loud. So they'll say like, uh, James, uh, I love that Zelda shirt. It's so fly. Uh, uh, excited emoji, uh, confetti ball emoji, uh, exclamation point. You know, so they were oh, <laughs> it was just like that's really was, annoying. Yes, dude, it was just I don't know. It was uh, circle, circle. Uh, let's get it turned out. Uh, monkey covering face emoji. You know, it's just it's just it was it's breaking me a bit, and it was just the people were so empty there was like i mean there was just there's no depth to anybody there it was just so is this a reality show or is this yeah yeah it's a reality show and so oh. won like a hundred grand at the end of it it was just so painful oh that's terrible so painful so do yourself a favor and, and watch an episode just so you could see uh why what? humanity should, like should a... be wiped off the face of the earth <laughs> why do you always try to do that like have you seen the movie the room no i haven't seen the movie the room it's terrible you should see it no it's the it's the the, the, the entertainment equivalent of oh god this tastes terrible you want some mm. oh my god do you smell that here have a sniff <laughs> wow this is the worst thing i've ever smelled smell it what is what is the the, the human compulsion to to do that uh misery loves company. to share yeah i guess i guess i guess we got to verify with the other primates that we aren't crazy. Oh my God, am I having I a stroke or is there burning toast? You know, it's just, yeah, it's one of those things. Hey. <laughs> so let's see what else happened this week. This isn't a test. People are allowed to walk through the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I turned up an external peer on our ASR 9000s, and I forgot for some reason that if you don't have a policy there, uh, it doesn't send any routes, like outgoing. By default, if it's an external peer, they require you to put inbound and outbound policies. Otherwise, it won't receive or send routes. So, Oh, I, they idiot pooped that, didn't they? They're trying to. Although, did you see there's like a new Cisco vulnerability with CDP that affects that stuff? Supposedly, you can, uh, uh, like, uh, it's like privilege escalation or something like that. So, so oh, seriously? Like, it really only yeah. seemed to affect the Linux-based operating systems. And iOS XR is one of those, so the ASR 9000 is nice. tricky. Oh, we also had a cut it uh, from Zayo in Austin, which we have appearing with Zayo in Houston. And there was a cut right. in Austin, and we started getting some packet loss and uh, quickly realized, oh, somebody doesn't... Uh, Somebody doesn't have their redundant link sized right, otherwise they wouldn't be getting so much loss. So, such is life. Even the big boys so, cheap out something. I was gonna say, right? That's how you. <laughs> that's how some people choose to uh, to boost their EBITDA. It's like, oh well, we can't get any <laughs> revenue. Let's let's cut costs. <laughs> Everything must go. Right. I'm just gonna roll right by that one. Uh, so, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I had a thought. I had a thought the other day. Um, <laughs> See where you are in this. Would you trade, mm, let's say, 10 years of your life if you could eat anything you want and you would always stay, like, trim and healthy? You wouldn't even have to work out. 10 years. But you could literally eat all day long. You wouldn't gain a pound. I think I think that's already a medical fact, isn't it? Like, there are people who go get lap bands and then eat <laughs> eat everything they want. And they say they stay somewhat trim, but they do die a lot sooner. I don't, I don't, I don't know that there's necessarily any statistical proof to back that up. But I want to say, I want to say what you're what you're saying is actually what happens in real life. I'm just saying a, a personal hypothetical. Would you go for that? Would you trade no. ten years? No, no. Why not? Well, God, ask me, ask me when I'm seventy. <laughs> because like I don't, I don't want to live to be eighty nine and in diapers. So like, if I'm seventy, I'm like, and I'm still kicking it. I'm like, you know what? F this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do nothing but smoke cigarettes and drink whiskey for the le- for the next year, and then just cut it. Just give, just to get, to take that ten now, dude. I think once you <laughs> once you get up to that age and you're a dude, you're getting so decrepit that, eh, what's what's the last ten years anyway, right? 
It's like pfft, your memory's probably gone. You probably can't remember much of it, anyways. Eh, you know. I, well, I mean, judging judging from the the previous uh, 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 generations, I think when we hit seventy eighty, we just get to say "eff it." Um, let's torch the environment. Let's uh, elect a complete moron and try to kill as many people that aren't like us as possible. Right? Let's do that now. Why wait? Well, <laughs> we're not allowed to. Oh. That, 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 that societal <laughs> slot is filled by you know people my parents age got you so like when you turn 70 they like send you a golden ticket to uh be an yeah, asshole it is i it's i don't know if it's actual i haven't asked my parents if it's, <laughs> it's literally there but i the one thing i'm actually absolutely looking forward to is shuffling down a random uh, the bread aisle let's say at, at at the grocery store and all but crapping pants and not caring just just standing next to a 40 something housewife and letting a fart the size of Chicago and just continuing to walk on and let them let them deal with the the, the, the social awkwardness. I'm beyond that, you know. Are you even going to acknowledge it? You're going to say, ooh, "No. Oh, that was a nice one." No, the the best old people just go. Like nothing happened. Like it was the 40-year-old woman that farted. Like the if if the if I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> that that's the that's the dream to live right there. Is, but isn't is, the real dream to own it too and like wink at them, give them the old finger guns? Gotcha. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I, I didn't give it that much thought. You know what? Maybe. Hopefully, I'm. I'm. Hopefully, I have the the confidence at that point in my life that I don't care. That's the goal. I guess that's the dream is to not care. Oh, right. Do you care now? Is, is if I fart in public? Yeah. Yes. What if your spouse is if, right if, next if, to you? If people hear, if people hear it, yeah, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I was gonna say because if there's somebody right next to you, you can always just you know. <laughs> Play it off like it's them. Just like, hmm. Like we're in the grocery store and the kids are acting a fool. Sometimes I'll just step like three feet from Christy and I'll go, lady, you need to handle your kids. <laughs> oh, she man. loves it when I do that too. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Your kids are out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of oh, mother man. are you? Jesus. This is ridiculous. <sighs> That's oh, great. man. So something else. Speaking was, of. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go. I was gonna say something else. I was reminiscing about is that uh, I'm coming up on my one year anniversary of my kidney stone, and uh, I was thinking how I still haven't fully recovered. It wasn't the kidney stone that really kicked my ass. It was I had a, a kidney, inf- no, a urinary tract infection. They gave me some doxycycline Ooh. after it, and I had like this mm-hmm. horrible reaction. I'm still like trying to get over uh, the adverse effects of that. So don't do it. That sucks. It's just I don't know, man. I've never been to a point in my life where something drug on for like a year uh you know trying yeah. to trying to get over it and man, nothing, i had that happen to me nothing makes you feel that's about old two, that's like about that. two about two or three years ago <laughs> 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 it just seemed to drag on oh. for an entire year that i was miserable oh. and then uh was it the, and then everything got better was it was it working at the same place as me is that where you go with this or no that's the best part the best part is you have no idea which of the two major life changes i had in that in, in two and a half two and a half three years ago oh. that, like which one i'm talking about i don't know but you pick one we'll just leave it in the air and see if people listening can figure out what it was yeah <laughs> put in the comments section below what you think my major life <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, dude, but I don't know. Oh, I just God. hate feeling old lately. It's, uh... Oh, I hear you. you dude, the keto virus, uh, the keto virus, Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's it's like an infection. No, uh, <laughs> I, uh we've been on uh, the keto diet for like 10 months now. Holy crap, I feel great. Have you actually lost weight on it? Or Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm back down to... I was a 36 waist. I'm back down to like a 33, 34. Oh, that's pretty baller. Yeah, um, yeah, I do. Need and to I eat as much bacon pounds. as I want. Yeah, it's pretty good. I, no, I, you can get over bacon. I do though. eat. I do eat. I do eat more bacon. But it, the key is actually is is the healthy fats like avocados and stuff like that. Oh, and you can't eat carbs and stuff too, right? Right, but we basically didn't do that anyway because of because three out of seven of us have celiac. So like, there's oh, yeah. all all the diet the <laughs> diet to begin with was barely was barely carb related anyway we, all the, all we all we did after that was just no rice okay i know dude that, and we do rice cauliflower which is amazing that keto pizza stuff you guys make is baller dude right that takes a lot of work it's, though doesn't it no no what? big big bowl with you know those big one of those big bags of uh, like the one and a half pound bag of shredded cheese you pour that into a bowl and microwave it for three minutes and you mix it all together and then you, you put about 
This this became a baking show. Well, mm. that's what happens when you invite a guest on. Oh, uh, great baking show! Come on, bro. Come then on. You add a, then you then you add a little bit of uh, <laughs> of almond flour or almond. I don't know how do they pronounce it over there. Uh, some almond flour. You mix it up like one egg, and then you you stretch it out, psh, bake it. There you go. Oh yeah, yeah. It was really good, yeah, man. Amazing. So yeah, something else I was thinking about was um, here in Texas we have flags everywhere. Like Texas flags are quite literally mm-hmm. everywhere. So much so yeah. that you know it's it's almost like forty percent of our rednecks have uh, Texas flags on their body somewhere as well. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think is that is that localized to us in Texas that people have so much pride over the place they were born? Or do you think that's everywhere? Yes. No. I, the, do you think there's people with like in, Idaho living... tattoos on their neck? You know, it's like just... no. Living in Pennsylvania, I lived in Pennsylvania for 15 years, and the only place the state flag exists is at the state capitol, and maybe I don't remember if I had one. No, I didn't even have one at my school or my high school or anything like that. It was just the the U.S. flag. So the state capitol, maybe a handful of banks. Pennsylvania flag, I guess maybe Pennsylvania doesn't like their flag. It's blue with a couple of black horses on it. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're not proud. But no, I think it. I think it is very much Texas. Uh, it seems is full of really weird, right? People, or is it just weird to yeah. me? No, it's it's extremely weird. I think California. I think a lot of people have pride in California and stuff like that too. Maybe it's just you know where there's a concentration of like redneck or redneck type people. You know, because rednecks no no race creed. You know, you could be a redneck. Uh, they they, re- anyway. they refuse. They refuse to meet anyone of any other race or creed. Uh, uh, yeah, fair enough. That's why. That's why. They, that's why they don't know them. Uh, uh, no. Um, yeah. Just Sorry, think, I oh, no. just realized I'm alienating all of the rednecks who listen to your technology podcast. <laughs> nah, that's only. That's only like three people. Um, I know. Buzzing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It just it seems weird that like uh, you would take pride in a place you just happen to be born in. I mean, you could be born in any other of the 50 states that you wouldn't care, but since you were born here, all of a sudden, you know, you've got to wave this flag and get a tattoo of it. Really, just the idea of people tattooing uh, the state they were born in, or people who tattoo, like, the area code that they were born in. That's, like, a thing around do people here. Do, is that a thing people do? Yeah, dude, that's... Around here in Texas? Yeah, that's pretty calm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It just seems odd to me that people have so much pride in where they actually come from. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I should have yeah, more. Maybe they should think about more about where they're going. Yeah. What would that yeah. be like to uh, Costco, Sam's Club? <laughs> is, that, is that where you're going with that? Yeah. Not, well, yeah. Nice, basically. Nice, lovely stroll. Yeah. Um, I've got. Speaking of Texas, I've got. I've got a, a, a minor minor rant I can go on about the state of Texas. Mm-hmm. So I, as you know, I adopted. Uh, my my wife's kids Evie and Des I, they're, well they're my kids too but I adopted them officially in December of 2018 oh that was a minute ago the, yeah the state of Texas cashed my check to process the adoption and the uh, the birth certificate changes they cashed that in February of uh, 2019 now would you like to guess as to when I got my birth certificates in the mail they, with their corrected names they changed their birth certificates I never yeah. that never occurred to me that they would yeah, do that. Yeah, from 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 their previous last name to my last name. Oh, so you actually changed their names? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, what's your guess? When when, when did, how long did it take me to get those? You said December twenty ninth, no, twenty eighteen, and they cashed yeah, so it in it's, February. It's been yeah, it's been it's been so I mailed it in in February twenty nineteen. But six months seems like a reasonable amount of time to me. You would think. Yeah. Right. You would think, Greg. <laughs> As a matter of fact. <laughs> It has taken a full year for them to, and me emailing every of my local uh, of my state representatives about the issue. Wow. For them to email me a reply as to why it's taking so long. You know what their reply was? Well, both those children were born out of state, so we can't process that. We forwarded that on to the appropriate states. Here are, is their mailing addresses. Oh, that's it. Yeah, so it's been a year. They cashed my check and then said, we actually can't perform that service that you paid us $170 for, which I guess I'm not getting that money back. Uh, we've And so I called the state of Idaho and Kansas. Idaho was apologetic. She said, well, 
I don't have any paperwork. Um, and I'm really sorry. You can file that directly with me, but we're backlogged by about six weeks. I'm like, are you kidding me, lady? I've been waiting a year. <laughs> six weeks is nothing. So yeah, it's great. Um, $170, no birth certificates, and I'm going to have to go directly to each of the states to get that done. That's fun. What did you say? Idaho and, and Kansas? Kansas, yeah. Are they any better? Kansas, yeah, Kansas is like, oh, we don't even have a fee. Just mail us these two documents, these two certified documents from the courthouse, and you're good. I'm like, well, hell yeah. And Idaho's 40 bucks, and she was really sorry. She's like, if, if you can't wait the four, week, the, the four to six weeks backlog, uh, we can do expedite it. I'm currently working on stuff from today that are expedited. I was like, we're, we're good. Six weeks. Are you yeah. kidding me? So, yeah, thanks, state of Texas. <laughs> Stealing two hundred dollars of my money and then not telling me. And the best part is, you call into Vital Statistics and say, "Hey, I've got this adoption thing. Can you know? Can you ask them what?" They won't give out a direct phone number or transfer you over to the department that handles the birth certificates hmm. because it's so backlogged. They're like, "Yeah, it's only going to slow them down." Like that's literally what one of the, the the people said to me. Like, "I we can't do that because it'll just make your thing take longer." I'm like, "Okay, what's the update?" It's in progress. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Except that it wasn't. How fun. Yeah, except it turns out it wasn't. Mm. Anyway, so. Well, that's fun. As you can as you can see, I'm really proud of my state. Yeah. A lot of red tape. Everybody loves it. Yep. Oh, man. So you've been doing a ton. That's what the red and the flag stands for. <laughs> uh, <sighs> let's anyway, see. Anyway, sorry. Uh, I was reminiscing on how every time I do something in Linux, I have to fight with it. Like it never, you know, in windows and everybody hates windows and you get an application of windows, you just double click it and it installs and works. Mm -hmm. Why is nothing that straightforward in Linux? Nothing is just work. Well, I mean, I say that sometimes you can just yum install stuff or, or app. Because it's an elite club. If they wanted everybody to be able to do it, (laughs) they they would have, they would have made it easy. That's that's, that's the reason because they're a bunch of elitists. Actually, yep, a lot of Linux exactly. guys I've met are really just, a lot of pretty baller dudes, though. But uh, well, no, they're, they're, no, they 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 clawed their way through billions of Stack Overflow posts to learn the correct <laughs> way to do something and to figure out you know which of the seventy eight of the eighty posts on Stack Overflow are actually complete bullcrap. They 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 have their war stripes. They earned their elitism. That's so exhausting. I just. Uh... Sometimes, when I, you know, it's like a big project and it's coming up on Linux. I just, oh, God, I just, ugh, fine. All right, here we go. Let's jump in. And then a day and a half later, it's working. It's just, it, I don't know, man. I just yeah. get so tired sometimes. That was the worst part about, about me not working at that company with you anymore is that you had to start doing all the system stuff again. No, I just let it, I just let it all go to pot. That's what <laughs> <laughs> let it all die. Yeah, I wish. Uh, we got snapshots, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're actually redoing all the server infrastructure, so it's, hopefully it's it's going to be all nice and documented and backed up. Or at least it will be at one point, right? Like as soon as, as soon as everything's there, it'll be good, and then yeah. uh, you know, then there'll be creep. Uh, what do you call that? Creep. After that, it'll just kind of slowly mm-hmm. change and oh, get yeah. there. But it'll be good for a minute. <gasps> oh, so. What do, you, what do you even need in that infrastructure anymore? I mean, what? Uh, monitoring. So we do you oh, know, all of our right. monitoring infrastructure. We monitor the uh, you know the building stuff, uh, the software packages we use for that, the the software packages that control the uh, cray units, you know the air handlers, mm-hmm. so oh, all that yeah. stuff. And then we're actually doing some of the air condition controls for some of the sister companies at different places as well. Um, Goodness, I don't know. It's just little, and then all the power monitoring infrastructure. That we're doing too so all the billing stuff oh yeah yeah you know just it's lots of weird little things here and there that are and then our uh like our backup software we use unimus now unimus.net it's thomas's stuff and it's pretty nice. baller it uh reaches out every night and backs up all of our stuff and then does diffs so we can you know do revision control and stuff like that and then uh it actually everything that changed it sends us a message in slack and shows you uh everything that changed and if anything failed and all this it's really nice you can cool. even have it uh, email you the di- or Slack you the diffs. I mean, you could do email and stuff too, but it's neat to have yeah. all that stuff pop up in Slack. So I've decided for the MUM this year, I'm doing Ansible. 
uh, with mass configuration pushes on MicroTik. And so I'm trying Sweet. to think of various scenarios where it would be useful to do that. So some stuff I thought of was like uh, backup, the, or not backup, but um, update router OS, check the firmware version mm -hmm. and make sure. That's one thing that I'm still figuring out. It's like how to format returned information. So like Ansible will go and like check the version number, but I also want to check like right. the router board version number and compare the two. Are they the same? If they're not, then the update. And it seems like it would be so simple to just format that and then format the other one and compare them. But I'm having a lot of problems go Googling uh, like string manipulation in Ansible. So right. I don't know. I'll end up figuring that out or I'm going to have to write a freaking module to do it or something. So one way or the other. But if you or yeah. anybody listening thinks of anything, let me know. One of them is back up some stuff. So I use Unimus for all the really important stuff. But um, mm -hmm. if you've got some devices that really aren't that important, I've actually written a playbook that will go out in mass and, and back up and then save them all as files. So you could have it like run like once a week or once every two weeks or whatever and just back up those text files. It does a really good job of it. Um, That's cool. It just doesn't do the That's great. version control and all that stuff. So let's see. My favorite print song. <laughs> Version control. <laughs> so, uh, did you watch the uh, Super Bowl that happened? No. No, I didn't either. I didn't. And you know what I was thinking? I can't make myself care about football. You know what I was thinking? I was, I'm going to run into some other humans, uh, mostly male, and at some point, there'll be this awkward silence where I could fill it with the Super Bowl, but I just can't, I just can't force myself to watch the thing. Like, you see that ludicrous display dude. last night. <laughs> he tries to walk it in every time. Yeah, I just I can't <laughs> I can't make myself care enough about it. I did see the halftime yeah. show and Shakira's uh, SpongeBob impression impression. Uh, there yeah. she did her little tongue thing. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> other than that, I didn't see anything. I wasn't man. I was super unimpressed by the halftime show. I don't know if you saw that piece at least. I did. It was so controversial. I watched it the next day because it was so controversial. Was it controversial? What was controversial about it? Women were saying it's inappropriate for a family event oh, like the, the it was too risky. Super Bowl. Well, to that I say they were wearing body suits, so you didn't see any. So I've been watching uh, RuPaul's Drag Race with Christy. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that taught me that you can't trust anything you see. Because <laughs> these, <laughs> I mean, these drag queens are like tucking stuff so tight it's like you have no idea what's going on and then it looks like skin but it's not actually skin they're wearing body suits like because they'll have like all this crazy padding but it just looks like their skin but they're wearing you know it's like matches their skin tone and stuff so it's like you probably didn't see an inch of uh j-lo's flesh you know i mean i, I assume her arms yeah. weren't in a bodysuit but everything else was so right you weren't actually seeing yeah. anything and the things you were seeing you can't really trust it it could have been padding trust me Dude, Queens will teach you all about that stuff. It's pretty bananas. But yeah, even for even for the sake of I need to fit in with regular society, I couldn't I couldn't force myself to care about it. I'm assuming most people yeah. watched it. I don't know. I think. I work with a guy who's a huge Chiefs fan. He's from Kansas City, so like that's the only reason I got so close to, to like letting the Super Bowl pass without without knowing who either of the I teams know, were. I know, we always play the game. But I work with that guy. <laughs> How far can you get? Because uh, I know we were we were at Buffalo Wild Wings like the Wednesday before, and I was saying, "Man, I have no idea who's in there." And then immediately on the TVs, surrounding yeah, like on every on every screen, like, yeah. Oh, dang it! <laughs> Why did we pick this place? Like, <laughs> Good times, man. So let's see what else. What else did I run into? Um, I play pickleball, and I always drag my right toe, and so it eats the toe off. So Christy found this crap called Tough Toe. It's like this weird epoxy stuff that you put on the end of your shoe. Super works. So for those really? those people listening to my woes and my sagas about that stuff, dude, I am so hard on shoes now. Like I just, I don't know, I beat the hell out of them. And my knees have been hurting me so bad that I've gone back to running shoes, so they're extra soft, so like the outdoor surface tears yeah. them up, so I have to like do all kinds. I've been like just duct tape on the front of my shoe for a while, so... Just get that that that, uh, that rubber spray, that Flex Seal stuff, and just spray the tip of your shoe That's with it every time damage. you go play pickleball. Yeah, I guess maybe that would work. But uh, this stuff, like I don't know, I've 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 worn it. Um, it's been on there, and I've gone through or, two sessions, and it's like still doing really good. So I think this is the answer. 
you buy a you can buy a gallon of Rhino liner and just dip the tips of your shoes in it. I don't know, man. Like truck truck bed liner. That stuff. <laughs> I I thought about it actually. That stuff gets a little it gets a little brittle, so I don't know that it would hold up because it has to be at least a little flexible. Yeah. But uh, this yeah. tough toe stuff seems to be working. They uh, they um, it was made for baseball pitchers and like uh, fast pitch softball pitchers because they drag their feet so much. Oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So it actually it's working. It's working. So we had a Fantastic. a change window the other night, and Sean was doing it. He was soloing it. Uh, it's not his first one. It's his second one to solo. And we had already – it was when we were rolling the gateways. And so uh, really, yeah, yeah. we Ooh. proved it on the first one. It was smooth. Uh, the second one, when he did that, it was just fine. He did the third one, and then a chunk of the airport went offline like seven minutes later. So he's like scrambling, he's like troubleshooting as best he can, you know. Um, you know, so he's really killing himself trying to figure it out. Anyway, he calls me about midnight. He's like, "Man, I just, I can't figure out what happened." And so, yeah, I was really groggy. So it took me a hot minute to kind of shake it off and and start thinking straight, coherently. But it had absolutely nothing to do with his change window. Um, out at the airport, oh, we have poor guy. a rack. That's the worst. I know, dude. That's what I'm thinking. It's like there's always, not always, but 40% of the time in a change window, there's like some red herring that just pops up out of nowhere, right? Mm-hmm. And so you're just chasing your tail yeah. and trying to figure out, did I do this? Does this have anything to do with anything? So out at the airport, we have uh, a POE switch, 48 port, Cisco POE. I think it's like a 3560. And... Uh, it was eventually, or it was originally supposed to be inside the building, I guess, in some designated area. Anyway, they moved it outside in the kind of like the area where the guys like have their lockers and stuff, but it was supposed to be climate controlled in there. Well, they ended up scrapping that to save money. So you've got this POE switch in a server rack up against the wall, uh, you know, with no air conditioning in Texas. And so I remember one day I went out there and I was touching something. I was doing something. And uh, we had the microtech just sitting up on top of it. And it was so hot that I had to pull my hand off. I was like, shit. You know, because it's, uh, one, it's in yeah. the heat. And then, two, it's supplying PoE to like 20 or 30 devices. Uh, yeah, so, holy crap. I know. So they ended up putting a fan out there. And uh, they ended up just putting like a, a floor fan that pointed at, I don't know, it's just, anyway. That switch locked up is really interesting. So oh, that's so funny. It locked up in such it a never, way. It never changes. You couldn't <laughs> you couldn't ping the switch. CDP stopped working on it. Spanning tree quit because um, the reason the stuff at the far side went down is because loop guard kicked in at the far side. And loop guard is basically uh, I'm looking at any trunking ports, and if BPDUs suddenly stop, I'm gonna block because there could be like a loop or something. And that happens because we're using a Mimosa link to go across the airport. And right, right. every so often, uh, the Ethernet will flip on that port. And whenever it does, Loop Guard will block it for like a second and then allow it back when those BPDU, you know, like when it auto negotiates back and then starts sending. Sure, again. sure. Um, but it was down for like, you know, 45 minutes. So Spanning Tree stopped. You couldn't remote admin into it and CDP stopped. But it was still passing traffic. So it was like this weird state where we didn't really realize it was broke. So anyway, we get out there in the morning to replace it. Or rather just to look at it. And the console's dead, of course. You can't console into it either. Um, And so we checked with a flight school uh, that feeds off of, you know, it feeds off that connection out there. And they had tests going. So we couldn't like, you know, if you're in the middle of a Pearson View test, you can't just have the internet cut off, right? So we ended up having to like put it off and uh so we just pre-configured another one <laughs> we had to go through a couple of hoops to get our spare switch back out because it had gotten temporarily put in someplace and we had the replace oh, no. so it was just it was like one thing after another <laughs> and it was that was the switch got put in because it was spurred by somebody in operations who didn't want to wait even though they were told it was okay the customer was aware i'm sure you know who i'm talking about uh, yeah. And then anyway, got to go above beyond. Got to go above beyond even when above beyond is completely doesn't buy you anything. Yeah. 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 Other than other than a lack of gear, the heartache needed. a little bit down the road. So anyway, so we and that customer that we borrowed it for was moving in at the precise time that we needed the switch. 
So we waited till the customer went to lunch. We swapped out with the switch that we were they were supposed to have, and then this week we're gonna go and replace the rest of them with the ones that came in like we were supposed to instead of this calico hodgepodge of stuff. Oh, so we went in there, we swapped that, we pulled it out, we pre-configured it, we went out to the airport, got ready, labeled everything, pulled it all, swapped it. <laughs> it was just, it was just this, uh, I felt like uh, I was in a sketch version of who's on first, you know, it was just, we were just running around in circles yeah. getting this stuff. But anyway, we pulled it out, it uh, it came up, so I was curious, I mean, it didn't matter, we were trashing one way or the other, but it did It did eventually come up. I was afraid to try and reboot it or anything, because, you know, obviously if I were trying to reboot it, it's just going to completely break, right. you know how that stuff is. So. Right. But I had never seen one cripple in that specific way, and I have no idea what happened to it, because uh, it wasn't spitting any logs out, because that portion stopped, and then I couldn't get to the console, so I, <laughs> I, I just... The perplexity, I just assume it died from exposure to the heat for so long, so... Your, your switch had a stroke. Yeah. They're looking at putting some... So they also have their uh, video recording uh, going into that cabinet. So they're, they're, they're after the death of the switch, they're looking at um, adding some climate controls in there. We'll see. Oh, but, hey. Yeah. I'm sure the guys will like it. That way they can actually, you know, change uh, in air conditioning instead of in the blazing heat. Yeah. Jeez, that's ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. Pretty good. Oh, man. Comedy of errors. <laughs> but that's life, right? You know, it's like stuff like that. I don't want to say that always happens, but it, ha- it happens enough to st- for it to be it, ridiculous. It doesn't happen everywhere. It only happens there, man. <laughs> but we, I don't know. You know, I kind of like, I like, I like being scrappy, you know, like, uh, uh, inventive, you know, get it done. I kind of like that. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just sometimes when you don't have enough people or enough time and stuff starts piling up on you, it can be uh, taxing. But I think that's everybody. Yeah. That's everybody everywhere, right? Yeah, it's 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 fun when you're smaller because you're not doing as much. When it gets when it gets big and you got all those customers, like you can't you can't you can never afford to take that time to be scrappy and inventive because someone's gonna eat that time up. Yeah. You know, I was I was thinking about the university A and M. Because I was talking to somebody who was um, applying to work out there, and he knows some folks that work out there kind of on their uh, fiber plant. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I was saying how it must be nice working out there because, I mean, A&M makes a lot of money. So they must have, yeah. and, and everything I've seen, it looks like it's done really well, uh, very efficiently, very cleanly. And uh, I was saying how nice that must be working out there. They go, yeah. That's nice until something goes wrong. He said, because everything is budgeted, right? So all these big projects you see, they're planned way in advance. They're budgeted. So if anything happens outside of that, they don't have any money that they can just go grab. They don't just have purchase cards where they can just go grab equipment. He's like, you're duct taping and bailing wire and everything together until you can then submit to get the money for the thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was like, oh, hell. I didn't even think stop, about it like stop that. Stop buying everything new. <laughs> stop buying everything new. Buy gray market. You got two of everything sitting on the shelf. But it makes sense, right? I, I hadn't even thought about it. Some organization yeah. that is well put, well, I'm, I'm doing air quotes here, well put together, has a lot of money, but they have so much process and procedure you have to go through that it basically strangles that kind of, that kind of nimbleness. Just sucks the yeah. life out of it. At least I can say that we um, can react you know, I've got a purchase card. If I need to react quickly, I can. I can do that stuff. Yeah. No, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. Man. What's the process and procedure like for you guys? If if you're like, uh, I'm assuming like if you have a project coming up, you do the same thing where you budget and all that stuff. Yeah. No, budget and, and you know, they've got a, it's uh, above us is where it happens. They've got to see, oh, are we capitalizing on this? Like, is this... Are we are we billing any of this to an actual customer, or is this all internal and stuff like that? Um, but it's yeah, it's, it's, there's red tape, and you know there's considerations that need to be made. You know that we had we were running up against some memory and, and memory and throughput limitations on our on our edge routers uh, that we, you know, we finally had to go to ASRs, but those, those ASRs are on like long-term loan from corporate IT. 
which we're a part of, but it's a different division. Gotcha. And you know, and it's been like a year and a half now, and we we supposed to have been shut that building off like forever ago, and they're like, so yeah, man. Uh, when we get to get those routers back, I'm like, they're in production, bro. You are not getting those <laughs> things back. And so every time we have a conversation about like little things I need to assist in this, they're like, yeah, anything we can do, anything to get those routers back. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Yeah, best laid but plans yeah, though, right? You know, that's that's yeah. how that stuff goes. Yeah. What did uh, Disher? Um, he said the most permanent solution is a temporary fix. And uh, there's some temporary fixes that have been running for 10 plus years that I know of. So, right. <laughs> Dang, dude. It happens. It's... But none of it's obviously none of it's in like the path of uh, the path of anything really important. But man, sometimes a piece of duct tape will hold a really long time. Yeah. And then, and that's, we all learned very tough lessons over there about showing executives cool things. Hey, this is cool thing. We're going on. Awesome. When can we put it in production and start selling it? <laughs> or, I'd like to demo this. Okay, cool, let's demo it. By the way, I've sold services on that thing. You can't shut it off. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> this is like, this isn't even, this is beta. This, there's no, like, I don't know how to rebuild this. I literally, like, there's no documentation on what you sold. Yeah, luckily. I'm sure that doesn't happen anymore. I was going to say, that was mostly before my time there, I think. Uh, I can think of one specific thing that, that was the one lesson you had where the CFO came in and was like, oh, this is cool. And you're like, wait, you actually have, it was our sister company using it. So it's not like a customer customer, but I don't remember what uh, the service was. Oh, I think it was the, oh, it was that me. voice. It was that voice server. Was it the meeting? Yes. Yeah. It was the, it was the, it was the friggin yeah, the conference call yeah. solution you found. And like, it wasn't even patched or anything. You're like, it was just, I got this thing yeah. working. And all of a sudden they were having regular meetings in that, in that, <sighs> the conference call. And software. they kept locking up. And I had yeah, it. and then they and then they kept calling and yelling at you. You're like, a hole. Like I told you, this wasn't a, a thing. Like yeah, we've wow. um yeah, it's uh what's God, it called? I think it's just called Voice Meet Me or Meet Me. It runs off of I think right now I've got it running on Free PBX. I think it's Free PBX that's running the Web Meet Me. That's what it's called, Web Meet Me, because it's got a web interface where you can go in and schedule. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Now um now that I rebuilt it on um. Free PBX with a web meet me, it runs rock solid. Like it has had zero problems. And uh, we use it all over our company. I don't think the sister company is using it, though. And I kind of haven't said anything to them about it. So <laughs> it's, it's just, it's working. And I don't, you know, there's a lot of heartache that we, uh, we learned about. Uh, well, you guys still, you guys are still using call manager, though, yeah, right? Yeah, we're still using call manager. And it just uh, what version? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, and so it just <laughs> it just kicks over to the uh, web meet me whenever you hit an extension. It's just a zip trunk over there, and it works it works oh, wonderfully God. well. So yeah, I would I would encourage anybody that needs a good uh, web front end if you can't afford anything else, look at web meet me. It's uh, that's a nice anyone app. anyone still running Call Manager four one two? I recommend this uh, as an option. An luckily, awesome, awesome add on. Yeah, luckily we're not on that anymore. Um, Oh really? That finally got updated? <laughs> oh golly! About time. Or did it? Hmm. No, it did. You of will not know of. Uh, right? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to out your company. As... <laughs> no, no. Everybody's got uh, interesting hodgepodge of technologies in their company. That's true. Us, no more, maybe more so than some other people because we've. I don't know, man. I, I like the uh, the right tool for the job sort of thing, you know. So if it if it fits. If it fits this right. specific screw or nut really well, we'll plug that in. Right. I mean, it, it, we we have a nail. Okay. Cool. I just need a. I need a hammer. Here's your hammer. Yeah. You don't need a fancy hammer. Yeah. Just get it done. And uh, yeah, it's mostly what we do. What do you guys do over there? I mean, do you ever have like a a vendor come in and really sell your execs on something? So you gotta like implement that stuff, or or do you guys build most of your stuff in house? What's um, the story? I think. I want to say, uh, I'm, the systems the systems department is so. It is that's the big difference over here is uh, the, everything's so spread apart. Um, I I want to say there was a big push company wide to move away from HP to Dell or vice versa. I don't know. I haven't I haven't had to buy any gear thankfully in the last three years. Um, uh, but we're pretty well insulated from all that nonsense where the guy comes in and buys everybody lunch and tries to mm. 
push a technology you don't need, you know, onto your plate. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, it happens all over the place. Like the vendor comes in, you know, they'll wine and dine the people who have been promoted to incompetence, and uh, and sometimes a change will happen, and other times it won't, and it, it's just it's seems it seems like whim. I want to say the, the people who've been there longer at the company longer will be like, yeah, we used to be on this chat platform and then we moved to this and then we moved back to like, so it was on, we were on Slack before and then we moved to hip chat and now we're back on Slack. This is stupid. Why do we keep, you know, I was in Microsoft link for a little bit and then, yeah, so just, yeah, we had our IT guys talking out. about, Hey, do you guys use Slack a lot? And I go, we use Slack extensively. I said, that's, what, that's, that's how our team does most of our communication. And it's true. Yeah. Like between the engineering as well as the knock guys, yep. It's like most of our communication yeah. actually happens through Slack now. <clears throat> goes, yeah. What would you think about moving to Teams? And I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, the Microsoft I Teams tell, product. I, I, I could tell you we wouldn't go along with it. We'd, we'd, what do I think about it? Go for it. We're still using Slack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, since we're moving all the Office 365, you know, we get a license for that since we're having like a, a mailbox account or something. He's like, that way you'd have long-term retention of all of your stuff i was thinking well yeah, yeah but any but in any of our like um actual communication that we get audited over we do still do through email so that it you know it follows right. the audit process and all that stuff so it's not like we really need to audit any of that stuff and i don't really it doesn't seem like we really have any like paramount communication over slack that i would need to go back mm -hmm. and reference you know, no, I don't want you to be able to reference something I fixed a year ago when you get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, that, no, that is one thing. That shit burns up the moment I leave the door. You know, it's so funny is that I, I used to I used to be that guy um, that would hoard information. You know, it's like I know how to do this. I'm not going to yeah. tell anybody. And yeah, I was uh, I was a shit. Um, oh, same here. Same here. I was a shit coworker to you for a long time doing that stuff. Uh, nah, only for a little bit. You and I, you and I had a had a, a healthy conversation less than a year after you got there uh, about about stuff and that's why we became such good friends it's just like okay cool it's very you and i are very very kindred spirits it's us versus everything else that's going on around <laughs> us yeah and two people fighting stupid is is better than one person fighting stupid so yeah the good old days it's funny i saw a post pop up on facebook the other day it was like uh it said you know, I walked into the old knock and the smell took me back and I was thinking, that's so that's so funny. Like I haven't I haven't had one of those flashbacks in a really long time. You know, when we used to sit in the original knock over in the corner back there. Yeah. Those were yeah. the those are the really good old days. It seemed like you know what, it seemed like the stakes were lower back then and uh we were Oh hell the hell yeah they were as hell, I mean, but but there was still having a good time, you know. It's a lot less money on the line. Well, there wasn't some spreadsheet that had how much money we lose for every second of downtime and all that stuff, you know. So it's just, yeah. things were a little bit less tight, a little bit less, a uh, little bit more fire from the hip, which I like doing. Not to say process mm -hmm. and procedure isn't good, and oh, especially now that I'm the yeah, guy that it's... is in charge of all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm very much a big fan of process and procedure. <laughs> but it was fun. Absolutely, it's it's, it's 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 absolutely necessary. But being able to being able to roll with it, and well, you know me, I hoarded hardware left and right. I mean, there were IP phones and all sorts of stuff. If I had the chance to buy it, I was buying it and hiding it somewhere because we always had a random guy who we won't who we won't name. <laughs> on the executive staff popping and go, by the way, I just sold this thing. We need to turn it up in three days. Like you realize like I can't even get it shipped overnight by that time. <laughs> I was, I'm, I'm Mr. Scott. I scouted the crap out of that place. We were miracle workers for sure, man. And that was fun. That was fun. I think I, I think I more missed the idea of that than uh, the actual uh, reality of it. I don't know. It was fun. It was fun times. I was younger then. Uh, I didn't always like more have hair. pain. Eh, I guess. Did I have more hair? Probably. No, I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. No. I wish it would all just go, right? It's like shit or get off the pot. Either just all of it go just, away. Just shave it. Shave it like my brother does. Oh, I do. I bick it every Sunday. It's just, you know, it's Saturday, so it's getting kind of long right now. But it's like yeah, I'd yeah. rather just not deal with it. Not deal with it at all. And then who needs a neck beard? I don't need that either. If that would just go away. That'd be great. And I wouldn't have to shave hardly at all. We'll just go. You know what? 
Get some electronics. When you do eventually, when you do, I was gonna say, when you do eventually get a job uh, somewhere better and have more money, <laughs> they're gonna bury um, me at that place, bud. I don't know about that. <laughs> that's that's not that's not their they're MO. Put me on a pile of routers <laughs> and then uh, light it a fire and push me into the river. <laughs> no, they'll, they'll light it with a flaming arrow. That's that's they'll give you a Viking a Viking funeral uh, on top of a flotilla of, of used Cisco. <laughs> no, yeah, they'll just uh, they'll take the old uh, sixty five hundreds. They'll put me on. They'll push me out, covered in gasoline. They'll just light an IP phone and then throw it at me. Just that'd be great. Can't wait to be there for that. <laughs> I actually talked. I talked to one of the. I talked to one of the knock guys recently, um, who told me. They don't listen to this, do they? <laughs> no, nobody listens okay. to this. Don't worry. They told me that they recently applied and, and you know got offered a VP of IT job somewhere at some smaller company, but they, but he decided not to take it because their stock tanked. Hmm. I'm like, what? You're not? Yeah, I told him, hey man, you should come come work in our call center. He's like, no, nah, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not a call center guy. Like if I'm if I'm if I'm leaving, I'm going to be like an like a, an IT executive. I'm <laughs> like, oh, well. That's not the worth that workout that you displayed working for me. Like so, hopefully it's changed. Like I'd be surprised if you got that, but if you do, great. You know what Go I've seen? I try to never discount something because I've seen some people when they're put in that position and you know nobody around them knows their history, they actually will rise to the occasion, right? And I I would hope yeah. whoever this is, because I honestly don't know whoever this is, I would hope they would rise to the occasion and, uh, and I, do I, well. I hope so. Uh, my experience was he, 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 it was his job was his lot in life and he's going to have to suffer through it. And, you know, it, 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 he didn't, he didn't rise to meet anything when I threw it at him. He would very yeah. much not want to do it. And I'm like, okay, well I'll have the other guys do it because they want to be here. So. Which kind of ends up giving him what he wanted. <laughs> but again, with, I don't want to do anything. Right. He didn't. Right, don't do any extra work. That's yeah, cool. I know Lucas is. Um, so we were we were talking about maybe giving him a raise, getting him to stay or whatever, but that's uh, yeah. that's off the table now. So he's officially he's officially going to be doing some interviews. I think up in the northeast somewhere. I'm not 100. percent He was talking about sort of Seattle or Portland or you know kind of in those areas. That's, that's north. That's northwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or northwest. There you are. Because uh, he's a cool kid. He's a super hipster, so he'll just fit right in. Um, but he was like saying, man, I'm so, you know, I kind of feel bad about leaving you and blah, blah, blah. I was like, dude, you know, and then never feel truly bad. From, never feel from bad. My you heart, I was thinking, you know, the greatest compliment you could ever pay me would be to spread your wings and, and fly and just be amazing somewhere, you know? And, and I, I know he's going to do it. He was saying that he's been <laughs> interviewing in a lot of places and, uh, they're telling him, uh, your experience doesn't really match up with how old you are. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's right. Cause I threw your ass in the deep end. <laughs> really yeah. Fast. No kidding. Ooh. Yeah. But, uh, well, that you did him, you did him a huge favor and you just need to, what you need to do is go home. Uh, you are yeah, home. I am home. <laughs> watch, watch, watch Goodwill hunting and then memorize that speech he gives him. Like, you know, I'm, every time I come here and I see you, I get really excited. Like basically, yeah, I'd be really happy when you stop showing up here. It's essentially, or like, Abed, give him a good, give him a good Abed Abed hunting Troy, you know, the, the best two minutes of my day is when I look over at your desk and I hope that you're not going to be there. But yeah, <laughs> because it's, it, it's a throw to, yeah. and then, and then he looks over ah. and then Troy's not there and he goes, <gasps> And then Troy's like sitting behind him. He goes, <laughs> he's sitting like in a different that? chair. Uh huh. Fool said he didn't want to be. <laughs> uh, good times. I don't know. I'm. Um, he's actually getting married in a couple of weeks. I think right at the end of this Lucas month. Is? Lucas is. Cool. Yeah, I'm officiating his wedding. That's even cooler. Yeah, so I'll get to uh, I, cast it. I get to uh, come up with some funny stuff. Because <laughs> you know he's very. Lucas is very unfiltered. So I remember, you know, I love learning new nomenclature, new words and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I just learned yeah. the word uh, twink, right? Which is like a oh, young, yeah, okay. slim, attractive gay guy, right? And so I was right, talking right. to Lucas. I was like, so I'm gonna like, you know, somehow it came up in the conversation. I was like, yeah, I'm a twink. And he immediately says, without hesitation, goes, more like a twonk. <laughs> Oh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky he didn't get fired. fired on the spot. 
that's right. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be fun. That's really cool. Yeah. I want to get a tattoo on my left arm that says, Live the way Lucas dances. Because that guy does it with reckless abandon. You remember Seinfeld? Do you remember, um, what's her name? Uh, Elaine Bennis? You remember her dancing? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's yes. a bit like that. Uh, oh, but goodness. it's middle of the dance floor, everybody, and he doesn't even care. He's just so it's it's pretty amazing, and he uh, super gets into it. That's awesome. Good I for know, him. dude. I wish I I wish I had the balls for that kind of thing. He uh, he really does uh, live. It seems so good for him. That's really that's awesome. All right, dude. Well, we've been at it for over an hour. I got nothing new unless you got something new. No, I. That's about it. I, I talked about the adoption thing and how I hate the state of Texas and Texas government sucks. Um, <laughs> how you're going to become uh, vegan? Not vegan. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no, the keto diet. I, I have. I got other stuff. I don't remember what I was. I, I had a bunch of stuff. Oh, I'm building a house. That's really fun. That's a fantastic experience. But we can save that for a different yeah, conversation. For sure. For sure. All right, man. I don't know if you want them to or not, but if you wanted people to find you on the internet, how would they go about that? I don't have a Facebook uh, account anymore because Facebook is for misery. Uh, you but, do LinkedIn uh, or something? Does that work? I do. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm James Burdine. Uh, and uh, I work for a company. <laughs> That you will not know of. No, until uh, you look him up on. <laughs> yeah, until you look me up on LinkedIn. No, okay. Uh, no, I'm a I'm a network administrator, network engineer, network administrator. You can't say engineer unless you actually have an engineering degree. Technically. Oh. Did you know that? Well, I say it anyway. I don't care. Yeah. I know. Suck it. People with engineering degrees get rankled. Yeah. Uh, and I'm worried about them. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, I work at, at Viasat, the satellite internet company. Um, it's a blast. I really the, the corporate culture is amazing. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm plugging my company right now. Uh, you can listen to my terribly, uh, terribly uh, uh, mediocre music. Uh, you can find it Tom, Tom the Fool on YouTube. I don't. I, I technically own the URL TomTheFool.com, but I don't have a website anymore because it blew up so many times. And I just haven't had the, the chance to rebuild it. <laughs> the last the last iteration of it, like literally, all I did was point you to my YouTube page anyway. So I really just need a redirector. I was gonna say you could turned up turned up on the internet. Yeah, somewhere. your hosting company, you could probably do a redirect through them. Just have it loop right yeah, over. Yeah, well, I'll talk to my brother about oh, yeah, that. Stop being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you want. Yeah, but no, yeah, that's about it. Baller. If you want to find me and Greg at gregsoul.com, so email you can go to gregsoul.com where I very occasionally uh, blog. I'm doing, I don't know. I can't say I'm doing more. I do a little bit every now and then. It's really just reminders to myself, and then also. We have. A, he plays D and D with me. Mm, we. Uh, you play D and D with me regularly. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do, and occasionally we go to lunch. You guys want to join us? Uh, give me a uh, give me a shout. Drop me an email. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see what else. Uh, we have a patron only Slack for the uh, the Brothers Wisp. We call them the Little Brothers Wisp. Go to patreon.com forward slash the Brothers Wisp, and you can sign up, throw us a couple bones, and get access to that. Where there are so many people, so much smarter than me answering most of the questions. I almost never get an opportunity to actually answer a question anymore. It'll get asked and then within five minutes two other smart guys will have already answered it by the time I get there. It's already taken care of. It's like uh they they don't need they don't need me anymore. It's uh it's so sad. Which is actually great. I love being somebody uh there's a guy called Nick Braulio who's on there and I had a conversation with him and he said I never want to be the smartest guy in the room. Because if I am, I have nothing to learn. And so I took that to heart because I've always felt like the dumbest guy in the room. So now I've got rationale for it. So I can I can learn things. So I, <laughs> I have no hubris. I have no ego anymore. It is completely gone. So i um, always willing to learn. Anyway, I've drugged that on. Thank you, James. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we're definitely looking for feedback. If you guys like this format with James, he's a, a fairly uh, attractive guy. You should check him out on YouTube there. Um, but uh, also he's very witty, very smart. I was thinking we can actually take it way dumber, uh, way more potty humor, but this was kind of a light introduction to uh, to our back and forth banter. So yeah, I, I held I held back. I didn't want to. <laughs> you don't want to get too know. crazy. 
Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure. But yeah, give us uh, feedback. Feedback, feedback. I always want more. Uh, thank you guys, and we'll talk to you next time. Shooting up the vibe in neighborhoods, net surfing. We got horrible jokes. We're loud and annoying, but we're informative facts. We're not disappointing. Just give us a listen, because fun is the mission. I'm telling you, you don't know what you are missing. Ideas and some good comedy given. If you missed the show already, don't worry, you're forgiven.